Today's landscape video is at the Coast Guard Cottages, which is in Seaford, just behind me. Roll the intro. I'm hoping that this lighting situation behind me is going to improve a bit. Uh, it was predicted to be a good sunrise. Uh, anyway, from the car park heading east, you're going to confront three different paths. Just go in the middle one. They all go to the same place, but the middle one is the shortest and the quickest. Um, from there, you'll be able to see these cliffs. So just continue down the hill. You can't miss it. And then once you're towards the bottom of the hill, you'll then see these cottages here. Uh, there's loads of scope for different compositions. I'll tell you my considerations for the, for the composition of this shot. Now one of the first things I'd like to tackle is I don't want the cliffs and the cottages to overlap. I'd be looking to do something closer to maybe that as a composition. You can see here that the ridge and the horizon are bang in alignment. If I step back a bit, then that is instantly fixed. That is something that I would also consider. This is the path that you'll come down from the car park. You can't get lost. Just follow this path, and this is the view that you'll be greeted with. There's plenty of scope. You can, get, you can photograph this with a longer lens all the way from the top of that hill over there, or you can get a bit closer, shoot with a wider lens. Uh, you've got plenty of options here. Uh, note that in the summer, the sun's going to be coming up over the hills here and in the winter it's rising out at sea. I've been to this location a ton of times so if the weather doesn't come off today it doesn't bother me. This isn't the only thing to shoot here uh, so I'm going to be taking you to Hope Gap which is around the corner. There's also a very good view from the top of the cliffs over there. Um, I'm going to take you down to the beach and this is kind of bringing together the fact that I've been to the top of that crest there in part one and part two of my video landscape photography at Seven Sisters. So part one and part two were actually based on the top of this hill here and on the eastern side of the Cookmere River which is over there. So I just checked my YouTube channel apparently it's been two years since I was stood here last um, but I've been to this location maybe six or seven times over the years so if today's weather doesn't kick off I'm not bothered by it. I've got some really good shots of this place. Today you also notice that it is high tide. I personally think that this place is much more photogenic at high tide, unless you were to do the reflections of the cliffs, which is in my part two video. Okay, so I've set my camera up now. Um, the first thing I do, I'm going to do some long exposures just because I freaking love long exposures. So before I put an ND filter on, I put a grad filter on and I just take one single shot to get the exposure correct, as in the foreground and the sky correct, balanced. Then I'll add the 10 stop filter. And now we wait for four minutes and have some soup. If you were just photographing the cliffs alone with the water as the foreground and the sky, then soft light will work. But because we've got the cottages here, they can end up being a bit dull, flat and miserable. So you really need direct sunlight for this to work here. I've photographed this at sunrise and sunset. Now, you'd probably think, why would you photograph the cottages at sunrise if the sun's gonna be behind it? Well, the idea was, if there was a clear sky this morning, that I would get a sunburst just popping up over the top of the roof, which I've done before. I can show you that now. Why why come and take the photograph again, Ben? Well, I always just like to improve upon things and I like to get out of the house, so why not? Okay, well the light isn't really happening here, so I'm gonna move on. I'm heading down to the beach, which is just along the path here, down the hill, past the cottages, and you'll be on the sand. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever taken any photographs from down here before. 
I'm not sure that these are actually attractive to have in your foreground or not, but I'm here, so I might as well. This looks like a pretty good place to launch a drone from as well, so. I'm going to head to the cliff top which is around the corner from these uh, cottages and I'll show you a different perspective of these cliffs. Probably a better angle in my opinion because you can actually see a bit more of the cliffs rather than just, just the end of the first one. Okay so as you can see, I'll flip the camera around, the further along the cliff edge you come the, the more of a side profile of the Seven Sisters cliffs you get. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 seven. Yeah, assume that there are seven there. What you will struggle with here is any sort of foreground interest. So your only option really is to have water, cliffs, and sky. Um, on the odd occasion, I've got a surfer. I've got a few surfers around here, but they're just a bit too small to make it a powerful foreground image. Follow the cliff around to the south, and you'll eventually end up at a place called Hope Gap which has a staircase that leads down from the grassy area down to the beach. You need to check on the tides though because at high tide you might not actually be able to get down onto the beach. Right so once you're at the top of the stairs you've got a few options. I've actually photographed this scene from the staircase itself. Uh, your tripod can get above this handrail here. If it's high tide, which I think high tide's a bit more photogenic here, you've got some rocks here as a foreground interest. Cliffs in the background. If you want some rocks as foreground interest, quite a few boulders here. The problem I have with these boulders, they are the first boulders that actually cut through the first cliff. And for me, that's just a bit annoying. Uh, it's not exactly to my taste. So for me, this is where the shot is if you're going to photograph the cliffs from Hope Gap. Yeah, what a great location. There are so many things to photograph here. Right, well, I have left Hope Gap. I'm just at the top of the stairs, which are over here. And finally, uh, you've got quite a nice view from up this hill right here. I've been up this hill a ton of times, but my car is that way. So rather than walk all the way up to the top of this hill to show you what the view is gonna be like, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna send the drone up there so you can see what that's like. Success. Good news person who lent me the drone, you can have it back. Well that is me done at Seaford Head. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you're going to come here and shoot some landscape photography you now know your way around this area. Otherwise don't forget to like, share, subscribe the video and I'll see you in the next video.